Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we will be reacting to My Hero Academia Season 7, Episode 19, which means we are two episodes away from the finale. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the finale of My Hero or just the finale of this battle right here. And honestly, it doesn't really feel like we're nearing the finale yet because we still haven't really taken down any of the big villains yet. We still have Shigaraki. We still have all for one we still have himiko we still have dobby we still have basically everybody well we did take down spinner we did take down spinner so we got to give ourselves a little bit of credit here so if you guys are excited for the episode make sure to leave a like while you're down there don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you guys know whenever i drop a brand new reaction but with that a lot of the way let's dive into this okay so we're inside of the the city right now Oh, we got the Todoroki family. And then the kids from the provisional license thing. Dang. Dang, they were causing this? I mean, I'm not surprised, but holy, okay. Seems like this uh, Deku versus Shigaraki fight is definitely far from over. A block that's being stopped from the inside. Oh, okay. So we caught the culprit. So what, is he just like a rip-off Kaminari? Oh, did he retire? And he came back. That's why he looks so familiar, because I'm almost positive last episode, or maybe one of these episodes, we were, like, looking through a lot of different faces of characters, and I know last episode especially, they showed off a lot of characters from the movies, and I saw this guy's face, and he looked familiar, but I didn't quite know why, and I guess this makes sense, because he used to be a pro hero. It's just he looks so different without the suit. This man's gonna create a freaking supernova on the Earth's surface. Oh, then he's just gonna go boom. Yep. Five kilometers. Oh my god. Yeah, even he's sweating bullets. All for one's coming. Dang, everything's going wrong. But this is the perfect time for the heroes to get a stroke of luck here. Oh. I don't know if there's anything that can stop that. It's one of those situations where you just gotta get him as far away from the people as possible. This is like when Goku had to instant transmission sell off of the planet so he wouldn't blow it up. This is almost exactly the same. There we go. Dang! Go okay. <laughs> That's so fire. I love these Ida moments, man. He has one of the coolest quirks up. Stain! Hold on. Oh, here we go. You already see the animation. Ida always gets the best animation, bro. <laughs> Look at him. He's not even touching the ground. Oh, look at his face. <laughs> That's why he wears the mask. Oh my, no way, no way, no way. He's coming out of retirement. No, 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 we're not getting this, we're not getting this, this isn't real, no way, rematch? Ooh, I am here, there we go, that's what I like to hear, 
Should have said I'm back. <laughs> that would have went crazy. Oh my god. If that thing blows, it's really over. This guy's way too far gone. Dang! I feel like there's like no common sense left. Yeah, he's just mumbling memories from when he was a kid. Who knows how much of him is actually left in there now. So that explains how he was able to tap into that. Now he sees the ice. Yep. That's interesting, though. Just real quick, I think it's interesting how he mentioned that, you know, this quirk manifesting must have been a result of him being, like, pushed to his limit and being near death. But I'm surprised that him basically, like, burning himself alive in the forest, I'm surprised that didn't trigger any sort of, you know, quirk coming in last second to save him. Especially because that ice quirk could have saved him. It could have potentially cooled him down. <clears throat> now look at him. Okay. We got the fire hand coming back out. There we go. This is just like with the high-end Nomu, right? Except it was Endeavor that used his explosion, but, like, brought him out of range of the city. Jeez. Todoroki? Oh! Oh my god! Dang. Look at both of them putting everything on the line to save Toya. Oh, God. Jesus. They came too? Oh, they're all using their eyes. Dang. Now we just need the last Todoroki. That'd be a crazy movie title. The last Todoroki. Oh my god. Dude, that's holy. That's so sad. That was like a glimpse of what could have been. Is that supposed to be Natsu from Fairy Tale, bro? <laughs> He's got the hair, the scarf. Oh! What? That's so sick. So smart, too. Look, even the mask is burning away, and now it's just gone. The engines are busted! It's time! He's gonna freeze the whole city before he can blow. Ooh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Jesus, what's it called? Road rash? Oh man, Ida's definitely gonna feel that in the morning. Wow. This music! As Todoroki charges into the battle. Look at him! <laughs> oh my god! Dang! Wow. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to die. 
Here it is. Oh my, that's so fire. Oh my god. The question is though. Did Toya make it through? Oh, look at everybody! They're all burned and partially frozen. This looks insane. Wow. That's what we call character development right there, man. That is character development. I think we've known throughout this entire series that uh, Endeavor's goal was to try to, I guess, atone for what he's done or make things right. But I think this is the first time he's ever actually broken down and apologized to everyone in front of everyone. A part of me wants to say it sucks because Dobby wasn't always a monster. But if you think about it, none of these villains were really monsters from the get-go. I think except for All for One, maybe. Even All for One! I don't even know if he was a monster. I think he was a monster very early on. But I'm sure when he was like, you know, five years old, you know, hanging out with his little brother, he wasn't pure evil. But I think he was troubled from a very young age. It just sucks, man. Because this series has done such a good job of helping us see things through the heroes and the villains POV. So, you want to save everybody. You want everybody to get a happy ending. And it just sucks when it doesn't actually happen. But, phenomenal episode. Just, I have no words. This is, this was peak right here. This was peak right here. And my question of the day for you guys is going to be... Which part of this episode surprised you the most? For me, I'm not gonna lie. Out of everything that happened in this entire episode, I was most surprised when his mom came in there and started using her ice powers because we've never seen her use her quirk at all throughout this entire series. And we've never really seen her, like, I don't know, get involved in really anything going on. Everything that we've seen from her and that we've heard from her has all been things from the past before she went to the mental institute. So seeing her finally, you know, do something and basically put herself in the line of fire to try to save her son, that was so crazy to me. She's like the last person I would have expected to jump out in this situation so that was really cool but let me know what you guys would choose in the comment section down below and with that i am going to head out thank you all so much for watching this far into the video and i will catch you all in the next one have a good one